Welcome back. We are six days into 2025, and if you're one of the roughly 74% of people who set New Year's resolutions, you might be wondering how long you're gonna be able to stick to them. That's the question. Are you still with it right now, day six in? Well, our next guest says that when it comes to resolutions, Willpower alone is not enough. And she's here with brain-based strategies to help us actually achieve those goals. So please welcome back to the show neuroscientist and TED speaker, Sarah Baldeo. First of all, Happy New Year. Good to happy see you. Happy New Year. Okay, so this is a stat that I, I'm dying to know the answer to this question, so let me just get straight to it. We've heard that New Year's resolutions have an 80% failure rate. Is that true? And if it is, why? Uh, it is unequivocally true. Oh my gosh. And it doesn't have anything to do with willpower. It's all about the science of the way your brain works. Okay. And you wouldn't believe it, but New Year's is actually the worst time huh. for you to set goals. It's just part of our social structure that we do it. But in the winter, your brain goes into wind down, kind of conservation mode. Mm -hmm. Spring is the best time for you to set those goals because it's all about growth. And this is just a long established evolutionary mechanism that we still carry in our brains. So it's not the best time so at New Year's. So like you're talking, this out. is truly this evolutionary. Is evolution. Brains hardwired. Yep. Holy so wait, Toledo. So everybody who's at the gym, everybody who's at the gym with their new membership should get off the treadmill and just go home and just sit down and just play. eat <laughs> and eat some gnocchi and orzo and chill. <laughs> Don't bother. They were, they were Good. Yeah. Registered dietitian. Uh, how do chemicals in our brain impact the success of the goals that we set? So most of us have heard of dopamine. It's yes. a feel good chemical. It's all about pleasure and happiness. It gives you an adrenaline spike. And so you get this kind of fireworks going off in your brain. The problem is you become desensitized to this. <gasps> so you get that spike and you get that spike and then all of a sudden it doesn't feel as exciting. And so when we think about the brain and we think about how we've evolved, there's a part of the brain that's called the ventral tegmental area. Yeah. It's right at the core of your brain. Okay. And it basically works like it's pumping out dopamine to the front of your brain to send a signal to say, hey, you're on the right track. Keep making the progress towards those goals. Okay. You can trick your brain by exercising because exercise gives you endorphins and it is a natural opioid. So that's why when you exercise in relation to your goals, okay. you're more likely to achieve them. So get back on the treadmill for yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> In the spring. In the spring. In the spring. <laughs> so listen, I don't think it's news to anybody that when people are setting goals for the new year, we often set like big ones, <laughs> like big goals. And you say when we do those big grand resolutions, we are actually more likely to fail. Yes. Why is that? So your brain, believe it or not, is the laziest muscle in your body. It was programmed for efficiency. Mm -hmm. It was programmed to look for patterns and to do less and not more. So when you come with these big audacious goals, you're actually working against your established neurological mechanisms. So as an example, um, if I wanted to be the next prime minister, <laughs> I might need to be in politics first, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I might need to take those steps first. So those big goals just overwhelm you. It's much better to take small, consistent steps forward. I love this. Yeah. And I, I made zero resolutions, but I do believe in habit building. Yeah. So yeah. talk about repetition yeah. being a big, important part yeah. of helping us achieve our goals. Mm -hmm. Why is that? So envision in your brain, there's these series of kind of electrical wires. That's your neurons. That's how they function. Mm -hmm. And around each wire, there is a protein sheath it's called the myelin sheath. And so every time you practice a behavior, it gets thicker and thicker and thicker. Oh. And then the insulation works really well. And it's kind of this superconductor highway for your brain. Mm -hmm. So a great example is riding a bike. Mm. First time you learn to ride a bike, it's a little terrifying. You probably fall off. It mm -hmm. doesn't make sense to you because you don't have an established neural pathway. There's no protein kind of insulation around it. But then you do it and you build out muscle memory, you see a bike, you remember what to do, it's because you've built that superconductor insulation around the neural pathway through repetition. That's correct. Can, can I ask you a quick follow-up to that? Yes. D does that neural pathway repetition stuff uh, work as we get older? It does, it does. A lot of people think that as you get older, it doesn't exist, but that's been disproven. Neuroplasticity exists yes. throughout your whole okay. life. Yeah. That's great so news. no excuses. Um, no excuses. No and excuses. now I want to go back to that really great stuff you were talking about with evolution and how our brains are sort of hardwired to get going more yes. in the spring and the fall. So how can we 
utilize that to better set goals. So this is the kind of clever way of working with your evolutionary mechanisms. Historically, we were foragers, right? We were farmers. Your brain still remembers that, even though at least I'm, I'm not a farmer. Mm -hmm. And so what happens is in the spring, your brain is programmed for growth. In the fall, it's programmed for the harvest, right? right. And we're mm -hmm. gathering. Work. And in the winter, especially in Canada, we're battling seasonal affective disorder. Mm. We're going into this wind down mode. And there's a great study from Portugal actually that proves you can manipulate your brain through the temperature around you. So if you want your brain activity to speed up, crank up the temperature to be hot. No way. If you want it to slow down, cool down your temperature. And they proved that you can actually trick your brain by manipulating the temperature around Question. you. Yes? You're in perimenopause and you're already <laughs> hot. Oh, you're oh, telling you're me to cheap. make it hotter so I mean, my brain can work better? If anything, it means when you're in perimenopause, your brain is working better. It doesn't yeah. feel that way. <laughs> there right now. Yeah. It does not feel that way. OK, so what are some key tips or setting goals that we can actually achieve in the long term? So I have a long list, but I can limit it to four. So the first one is try to take small microscopic actions. Mm -hmm. A lot of the clients I work with is for career coaching. The biggest request is, Sarah, I want more money in 2025. <laughs> mm -hmm. I want to raise. And I say, OK, what steps are you going to take? Let's say you work 65 hours a week, and maybe you make 100000 mm -hmm. Let's calculate your hourly rate. When you do the math on that, it's $30 an hour. Mm -hmm. That's really how much you make if you put in that much additional time. Mm -hmm. Then I say to them, second step, you want to ask for a raise? Well, that 25 hours a week times $30 actually works out to $37,000 of a raise. And so when you walk into that room, come prepared with those neurological steps and actions to say, hey, give me more money. So that's really breaking it down into steps. Okay. Number two is keep in mind we are, we are still animals in many ways. Behavioral conditioning is so important. And so let's say you want to eat more salads instead of pastries. Well, then try to do things like only watch your favorite show, like mm. The Social, mm -hmm. when you're eating a salad, as opposed to just rewarding yourself all the time. Uh, Number three, keep can in you mind. Wrap these up, sorry, yep. up against the clock, so wrap these, these. Neural adaptation is important. Try to keep those rewards always switching, don't mm. keep them the same. Mm. And number four is about technology. Don't over rely on technology. So those love apps are that. great, nice. but yeah. don't over rely. Use this guy. Yeah. Cool. Sarah, yeah. we love all of these yeah. things. Thank you so much. Great tips. All right, everybody, let's take a quick break. Uh, let that sink in. We'll be back right after this. Hey, you, come a bit closer. We've got so many more must-see interviews, spicy debates, lifestyle tips, and pop culture moments. So subscribe to our channel by tapping the logo below and don't miss out.